All right, so there's a handful of online animation makers out there that all claim to be the best, but naturally that can't be true. I've animated in online tools for more than 10 years, and last week I took the time to test out each one, to give you an honest, non-sponsored, expert review of each animation software. In the process of creating this video, I watched other reviewers on YouTube plow through G2 and Captera, and I realized that I'm way more critical about these animation tools. I've sold hundreds of videos in my own animation agency and spent thousands of hours animating for clients and for my own courses. And I can tell you right now, half of these tools are not worth their salt. If you watch the whole video, you'll get a complete overview of the landscape, but you can also use the chapters to skip to the tool you're most interested in. Let's jump into the review. I've scored each tool on a scale from 1 to 10 on three parameters I consider most important. Style, usability, and price. Style is about the look and feel of the characters, the backgrounds, the actions, all that stuff. What does it taste like? Does it look professional? Usability is about how intuitive it is to work with and what features are there. It takes time to animate, so is it easy to learn, maybe even fun to use? Price is about the relation between the value of the tool, considering the first two factors, versus what they want you to pay for it, monthly, yearly, or as a one-time purchase. So each tool gets a score on each of the three parameters, and the calculated average corresponds to a tier, which is my final verdict of the animation maker. The first tool on our list looks amazing. I've seen these 3D styled ads for years, but hesitated to test it because there's no free trial. But if they can actually enable me to create Pixar style 3D videos, I'm ready to pay, and that's what I did. When it comes to style, Create Studio is unique in the sense that they go for 3D instead of 2D, like most other animation makers. Their characters look pretty great and much like that dude in their marketing video. Do they look like Pixar characters? Maybe a bit like Woody from Toy Story, but I think the style comes closer to Paw Patrol. The backgrounds or scene templates that are inside Create Studio are aesthetically pleasing, with nice textures, light and shadow, colors and depth, huge plus. To my surprise, these are mostly fixed images, so you can't make any changes to how they look. If this was a real 3D program, you could change every pixel of every asset, but these are pre-made, non-customizable images, sometimes with a customizable prop or two. There are other styles than 3D inside Create Studio, but they are less interesting to me because it's the 3D look that's unique for this tool. Because of this good-looking, consistent 3D style, nice-looking characters, and beautifully designed environments, I give the style of Create Studio an 8. 3D is hard to create from scratch, so it's an appealing selling point to have simplified this and made it accessible for everyone. But how intuitive is it really? Let's start with the good stuff. When it comes to usability, Create Studio's downloadable app feels really solid and well built. Note that there's no online version of Create Studio, it needs to be downloaded to your desktop. It works somewhat as an offline app, but you need internet access if you want to download the assets that you want to put in your scenes. The interface looks similar to professional applications with a canvas, a library panel, and a timeline at the bottom. The group logic in the timeline took me some time to get used to. You double click to see the elements of each scene, then go back to the main timeline. I'm used to video timelines with a standard stacked layout where all elements are visible and stacked on top of each other. So this got me confused at first, and I still don't like it. As you'll see with the other tools, everyone tries to rethink the timeline to make it more beginner-friendly. But most of them fail in the attempt to simplify. We'll get back to that. I love the instant preview feature, with zero wait time when you want to see what you've made so far. For many of the online tools, there's a tiny load every time you want to preview your video. And since you preview hundreds of times during a video project, this really adds up and matters when you are to decide which tool to go with. Create Studio surprises with a fully stacked library of stock video, stock music, and sound effects. This is pretty standard for most tools, but Create Studio's library feels curated, high quality stuff you can actually use. Some reviewers praise the new inbuilt TTS text to speech engine. But the Google voices I have access to are pretty thin. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Compared to where the technology is at. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. 
I assume the other option produces a better result, but I didn't pay enough. Or maybe Create Studio didn't pay enough because I know Google offers better text-to-speech than this. When people are new to animation, they love to use scene transitions all the time. And Create Studio lets you scratch that itch with a bunch of super high-end alpha transitions. I'm normally against the use of transitions for no reason, but these are beautiful enough to just slap on between every two scenes. A place where Create Studio's usability stands out is its in-studio character creator. You design your characters right there and then. No need to leave this view and go to a dedicated character creator as with many other tools. Extra points for an uninterrupted workflow. I also picked up the keyboard shortcuts pretty easily, which are essential for a good workflow. If you ever worked with any standard editing tool where you can copy paste, move things around with the arrow keys and shift, you'll quickly learn that these also apply in Create Studio. Lip sync is a feature that is almost required for online animation makers. The ability to connect a voiceover to a character so it looks like they move their mouth to the words that are said. Create Studio makes this super easy, probably the simplest approach to lip sync I've seen. Works really well, also with the way the mouth is synced to the voice, looks realistic. Get close to the mic, let's hear your voice. What words you will say is your own choice. One unique feature is that you can combine multiple actions with smooth transitions between each one. The price you pay for this is a quite limited library of actions, but the transition between each one is seamless, looks very pro. A feature Create Studio has copied from, for example, Final Cut Pro is the use of keyframes when you want an object to move, for example, for the walk action. For beginners, this logic isn't super intuitive, but if you're used to Final Cut Pro, you'll quickly pick it up. So as you can hear, Create Studio has a lot of good things going for them. Now let's move on to the things that I don't like too much. To be fair, Create Studio is not alone in committing this crime. I think the gating of features is wrong. Many of these tools have different tiers and plans and unlock different features, but I think the line is drawn pretty harshly with Create Studio. Unless you have the all access plan, you can only use a fraction of the beautifully designed 3D scenes we came here for. We watched the video with that guy at the laptop in his wooden office, and now we want to create something similar. And while that specific scene is unlocked with my standard plan, most of the scene designs require all access. And still, if you do have access, just remember, most of these scenes are static, so you can't make any changes to the individual elements. What I thought were scene templates were just video clips. Super impressive and very well made, but nothing you can change about them. So the idea of making your own video with Create Studio is maybe more about stringing together template scenes in a unique sequence. A lot of good things going on, but also a few shortcomings give Create Studio a usability score of six. Lastly, we need to address price. How much does it cost? If you want to pay monthly, their plans are either 27, 37 or $47 a month. And if you pay yearly, it's 99, 149 and $199. I actually only paid $83 for lifetime access the offer was $67 and then 25% VAT on top because Denmark. For that price, I got Create Studio Pro with something called commercial license. I guess it translates into the standard plan. But as you'll also learn if you watch this video to the end, most of these lifetime deals are only step one in a whole stream of prompts to make you pay more because you only get access to the most stripped down version of what they have to offer. I'll link to where I found this lifetime access campaign below the video. To conclude, Create Studio is a unique and pretty solid animation tool and those lifetime access deals are incredible value for money. So I'll give them a score of nine for the relation between what you get and what you pay. This gives Create Studio an average score of 7.6, which translates to a B tier animation software. Now let's move on from this 3D animation maker to a super popular 2D animation tool. Animakers got 20 million users, but I am not going to be one of them anytime soon because I think there is an off relation between the quantity of users and the quality of the product. Of course, it's not all bad. Let's start with what's working. Animakers animation style is calm, clean and friendly. Their characters look great, not too cartoonish, subtle details, quite professional, but still with some warmth. 
their animated actions are super smooth with what looks like a higher frame rate than what I'm used to. Very pleasant for the eyes. They've also designed a bunch of good looking backgrounds for those characters to live in. Good colors, good depth, good overall aesthetics. If it's possible to talk about a geographically rooted design language, I'd say that these designs are rooted in an Asian aesthetic. I visited an animation agency in Thailand and this was what their videos looked like. There's no right or wrong, just personal preference, and I land somewhere in the middle with Animaker and give their style a 6. Animaker's usability is a chapter of its own. Good things to mention are the intuitive character creator, which is more customizable than any other I've seen, lots of styles and lots of things to change, so you'll probably be able to design a character that looks much like yourself, which is often the goal. I also like how actions in Animaker are coupled, like in Create Studio. So if you want a character to work on a computer, you just choose that action, where in most other tools, you'd have to first find an action of sitting down, typing, and then combine that with a chair, a desk, and a computer, and try to make all those elements fit. Like in Create Studio, the price we pay for this is a limited amount of actions. This means you'll often have a hard time finding an action that fits with your story or message. And this is the point in my test of Animaker that I started to get frustrated. It was close to impossible for me to figure out the logics behind Action Plus and Smart Move. Having worked with animation for a decade, it killed me to struggle so hard with the basics. I'm sure there are nothing but good intentions behind Animaker's attempt to simplify and make it easy for beginners to get started. But if you're used to more standard interfaces that use keyframes for movements or uh, the standard stack timeline, you'll have a hard time unlearning that and learning Animaker's clunky logic. With multiple tools in today's test, we see attempts at fixing the timeline. There's a quote that goes, don't fix what ain't broken. And I think that applies well to a lot of what Animaker does. They've split the timeline into a scene timeline and an overall timeline, and then a small hidden camera timeline. If each one was an ingenious simplification, I'd applaud it, but I felt equally lost in all three. Could I watch tutorials and learn it? For sure. Is it intuitive? Not at all. With this in mind, I'll repeat myself from my full Animaker review and say that the tool seems to be best suited for stringing together a series of scene templates that aren't changed much. Custom scenes with custom animations seem to be a real headache to get right. So if I were to use Animaker, I'd get really good at finding and stringing together scene templates or just using backgrounds with characters on top. But Turns out, this is hard too. There's no search function for finding scenes and templates, so you kind of have to memorize what scenarios are there and then find yourself boxed into those. To top that off, the entire software build feels a bit shaky and buggy with things that got lost, things that I had to redo, things not showing up, and uh, lots of micro load times. So I have to give Animaker a usability score of four. A positive thing with Animaker is that their pricing is actually decent compared to other animation makers. To make something useful with Animaker, I would need the starter plan at 300 bucks a year, which is 25 bucks a month. This sounds super affordable, but uh, just remember any price has to be compared with the value you get for that money. And my experience is that Animaker is a low quality tool with a low price. So Animaker lands right in the middle and gets a pricing score of five. To be honest with you, I don't understand the popularity of this tool and I wouldn't use it if it was free. I think I would have to invest something else than money, a lot of time and energy. To me, it seems like a thin shell of a product elevated by an enormous marketing effort. I can only see this tool impress if you've never touched video before. And even then, I would recommend that you start it somewhere else. I simply don't get the hype. If you're a fan, let me know why I'm wrong in the comments. The average of Animaker's three scores is five, which makes Animaker a D-tier animation software. So if you are serious about making professional videos, you might consider the next tool instead. I tried an early version of Biteable years ago, so I was pretty skeptical when I had to revisit their video maker. But after a few moments, that skepticism was replaced by optimism. First thing they really have going for them is their variety and quality of styles. 2D, 3D, sketched, PowerPoint-ish, a lot to choose from. But this wouldn't have been such a plus if all these styles were bad, but they're not. 
Biteable has that trending workplace flat faceless style that I think is professional and aesthetically appealing. Right now, I'm into these simple styles with a few maximized props, and I would be totally fine with sharing these videos externally with my network on YouTube or on LinkedIn. And that's a question you can ask about any of these tools, styles. Is this something I would put my name on? Is it something that I would share and be proud of? If the answer is no, you probably have to choose another style or tool. Biteable styles taste great. They're aesthetically pleasing, modern, strict, simple, and they pass the would I share this with my network test. As you can hear, we're in the upper range. I'll give Biteable the highest style score given so far in this review, a nine. A few quick highlights of the usability of Biteable are the super easy voiceover generation, the ingenious way you apply your own brand, their huge template library, a very responsive, quick user interface with minimal load times that you can bulk edit colors and texts, huge time saver. The music included is tasteful, useful. The tool auto saves all the time, feels nice and safe. And last but not least, the collaborative features for teams who make videos together. You can share assets, comment on videos, and even invite someone to deliver a recording for example, an expert in your company, then you edit the recording into a video. That's all very good indeed, but no tool is perfect. So let's dive into the things that I don't think Biteable does very well. As with its animation maker cousins, this is a template first interface. What do I mean by that? Well, if you want to make scenes or entire videos from scratch using your own original ideas and designs, expect a clunky and tedious process. I assume 90% of Biteable's customers are video novices uh, who don't have the ambition to build anything from scratch at first. But as your skills develop, your ideas and creative ambitions also develop, and the perfect animation tool has room for that development. What's up with the fact that you can't search for assets? Imagine I was a dog trainer and I needed to find a dog to use in my video. I'd probably choose a style I like and then search for dog props within that style. Not possible. Maybe this is because the selection within each style is so limited, so you don't really need search when you can scroll through everything in a few seconds. But I would have loved a universal search bar where I can type in dog and then I see all the dog assets in all the styles so I know what I have to work with. Looking at the assets, Biteable is probably less for dog trainers or anything else quite specific like that and more for general topics like business, team updates, product promotions, surface level stuff like that, where a generic selection of props and actions will carry that message just fine in combination with a, a voiceover. Another usability issue I had with Biteable was the amount of clicks that I have to perform. Um, the keyboard shortcuts are very limited, so you'll find yourself clicking an awful lot. And this is not super annoying at first, but when you get to your 20th video, this will really start to annoy you. When you build a video, you preview a lot to see what it looks like by now, what animations play when, and so. I'm used to the shortcut Command P, but this doesn't work in Biteable. I read the help article on previewing a video, and it became pretty obvious there's no keyboard shortcut. You just have to click, click, click. I missed an expanded timeline, but I learned that it's not really necessary because you see the animations of each asset in a separate view. By now, you know what I think about the attempt to simplify the standard stacked timeline. And if I can get really nerdy with usability, the fact that secondary mouse clicks, meaning right clicks, open platform specific menus in some cases and browser specific menus in other cases, that earns Biteable another minus. Lastly, we need to address what all these animation makers tried to implement in 2023, AI. AI just had to be built in somewhere, somehow. Biteable does it better than average because the AI video creation works, but it's still more of a gimmick than something useful out of the box. But it works as a project Kickstarter, and that's probably also the point. With a lot of useful, solid, pleasant to use features and a couple of drawbacks, Biteable's usability score lands on a seven. When it comes to price, Biteable makes things simple and offers two sign up yourself plans and the standard 
contact us option for big companies. Prices change now and then, and they have changed since I took my first notes for this review. Revisiting their pricing page now, the prices have gone up to $99 or $588 for Pro, and $199 or $1188 for Premium. One time I logged in, a pop-up offered me Premium for $29 per month. So Biteable is probably a tool with some degree of flexible pricing. It's often a good tip to try to delete your account and see what happens. Sometimes you get an email with a huge discount. Uh, not with Biteable though, I tried. You get a seven day free trial before you have to choose a plan. And I'd say Pro is great for solo creators and Premium is great for teams. And that's amazing value for money with Biteable. On price, Biteable gets an eight. To conclude, Biteable is a great tool for simple explainers animated slideshows and simple formats like that for anyone new to video who wants a better than basic tool with high-end templates and that's easy to learn and who uses it for um, internal communications primarily. The three scores result in an average of eight and that makes Biteable an eight-tier animation maker. Next up is a tool I've praised for their character creator, but what about the platform as a whole? Once you get past the jungle of templates and into the actual video creator, you can work in four overall styles with variations within each one. Depending on what you choose, the libraries change and filter out most irrelevant assets. Nice. And I like what I consider Powtoon's primary style, the one they call animation look. A clean and simple aesthetic and super smooth character actions. I'm less of a fan of the other styles, the video style is what I'd call an animated slideshow with pretty okay templates. The whiteboard style is quite bad. And the cartoon style library looks inconsistent and slightly outdated. If Powtoon was my tool, I'd clean up the styles, get rid of what's legacy, and showcase a stringent, clean, primary animation style. But with all the clutter that I have to take into account, I give Powtoon a style score of 6. Powtoon does well in a number of usability areas. The timeline is, once again, a simplified one-layer design, similar to Animaker, but it's way easier to use. So even though I don't like the overall idea, the execution is not bad at all. Powtoon gets a huge star in my book for their instant preview. Oh lord, have I spent years of my life accumulated waiting for online animation tools to load. A basic feature of any animation tool is to be able to make stuff move from one location to another. Some use keyframes, some use motion paths, and Powtoon nails this with their A to B feature. Intuitive, thank you. Powtoon has two modes, edit and create. It's a fun idea where you're supposed to only make small changes to templates when you're in edit, and then you get full control of everything in create mode. Not a biggie, but they get half a point for this simplification attempt. The biggest thing Powtoon has going for them is the character builder, one of the best I've used, with a relatively unique ability to put logos on clothes and just a breeze to create custom characters. They've gated this feature behind the business plan at 125 a month, but it's there and it's good. On to the not so great things that need to be said about Powtoon's usability. I keep talking about a tool's feel, so what's that about? It's about the little things that are hard to point out that make you enjoy to work inside a platform or that make you dread it. Maybe it's not so easy to point out concretely, but it might be stuff like load times or micro glitches that just does something to the overall yeah, feel of the product. Like if it was something tangible, like a t-shirt you could have in your hands and you could feel the fabric and, and say something about the quality. Powtoon's feel is not great. It feels a little cheap, like there's no love in the code that makes up its foundation. Another annoying thing is the lack of filters. This makes it hard to stay consistent with one style. And there's just too much in the libraries to get that feeling of overview, knowing which drawer to look in for that specific thing. On top of this chaos and confusion, so much is labeled pro. So you have to upgrade to that plan to use these assets. Fair enough that you need to pay for a tool but I don't like this way of gating props and features. A simple feature like camera movement is gated and requires the business plan. Camera movement is essential in making your videos look more dynamic, less static, and in reusing one scene design in multiple ways. I wouldn't say that this basic animation feature is business specific, so why make it exclusive to the business plan? 
it also annoyed me that what you see on the canvas is dictated by where the timeline scrubber is. So things are just gone and you have no idea why until you move the scrubber and there it is. To round off this batch of bad UI, there's no way to work with voiceovers really inside Powtoon. I teach my animation students to let the voiceover lead the way, that the voiceover is master and the animations are servants. So the voiceover is foundational for any good animation video. And that's why I'm shocked by the lack of user interface around this. My best guess is that Powtoon primarily wants to be a tool for voiceless videos where you use on-screen texts to give context to the animations instead of a spoken voiceover. I believe that's a weaker format, but if the alternative is to not make videos at all, I'm all for it. Based on these pros and cons, I land on a usability score of six. The price for Powtoon is $480 per year if you want the professional plan. It's ridiculously priced at $190 per month, so you would obviously rather pay $480 for a full year. The useless light plan is 50 bucks a month or $180 a year. And the business plan where you get access to camera movements, the character builder and text-to-speech is $1,500 a year or $125 bucks a month, which makes no sense. The price per month for business is cheaper than the professional plan, maybe because it's annual only. The grade for Powtoon's pricing is given both for this mess of a price ladder and for the relation between what the tool offers and its costs. We land on A3. It's an animation tool best suited for simple template-based videos uh, without any voiceover. But I think it lacks focus. I'm not trying to deliberately trash these tools, but when you look at what's promised versus delivered, held up against what the competition looks like, I simply can't fathom that Powtoon has a score of 4.4 on G2 and 4.4 on Captera. The average of how I score Powtoon is 5, which makes Powtoon a D-tier animation maker. Let's move on to the next extremely affordable, highly promoted animation maker. If you're on the lookout for an animation tool, you might have stumbled upon this $67 lifetime deal, which seems too good to be true. And unfortunately, it is too good to be true. Let's do a quick rundown of Toonly and Doodly, two tools made by the same company. Toonly is a cartoon style tool and Doodly is a whiteboard animation doodle style tool. I made a full Toonly versus Beyond comparison a few years ago and Toonly hasn't changed much since then. So in this video, I'll focus on the stronger tool, Doodly. Doodly's style is classic whiteboard animation and as always with style, you gotta decide whether their aesthetic fits with your brand. I think it's nicely simple and actually looks somewhat hand-drawn in a good way. There is a bit of a Disney feel to some of the characters, but many of the props are very basic, almost icon looking. I'll give Doodly a six for their style. When it comes to usability, know that Doodly is a desktop app just like Create Studio that you have to download to your computer. So uh, it's nothing that your browser can handle. It's not the greatest interface ever made, but it comes closer to standard video editing tools I've used. The best part about Doodly is that it's a focused piece of software. It does whiteboard video and that's it. One way this focus shows is in the quality and precision of the animated drawing paths. Some tools do this very harshly, but Doodly makes it look like the assets are actually drawn by the animated hand. The worst part about Doodly is the limited libraries that are limited in order to make you buy a higher plan. The push to upgrade is omnipresence and this rarely does anything good for the experience of creating with the tool. For Doodly's current animation maker, I give them a usability score of 5. Doodly is extremely affordable, just $67 for lifetime access, right? Well, yes and no. If you buy this deal, you do get access but very limited access. You will have to pay more and more in the future to unlock features and libraries needed to make your content. If you don't get that lifetime offer and instead enter Doodly through the front door, so to say, there's a 14 day free trial followed by a $49 a month price tag. That's a bit hefty for what you get, which isn't everything. Then you have to pay $79 a month for the enterprise plan. Of course, there's an annual payment plan where you save 17%. 
With the way they price this, I think Doodly smells more like a moneymaker and lead generator for ClickFunnels than a, an honest animation tool. I think they price their tool relatively high. So Doodly gets a four for pricing and lands on an average of five, a D tier animation platform. If you want a better whiteboard animation tool, consider Doodly's cousin. I've reviewed these guys a couple of times and they keep getting better little by little. I love their simple whiteboard style, at least their primary one. It's easy to mix up their styles to create an amateur looking video, but if you manage to stick to one style, it's a good one. On this note, I'd love a style filter to be able to filter out everything but the style you choose for your video. If Videoscribe did full color customization of their props instead of partial, they would get a big plus for that because it would allow you to use your brand colors on all props. But it's not a deal breaker. I like the primary style, it looks professional, and I give Videoscribe a style score of 7 for that. Big news in Videoscribe camp, they now offer a browser-based version of their tool. That is great. I also tell myself that they've improved their animated paths for letters and graphics, a critique point in earlier reviews. I love the diversity of hands you can choose as the one that draws all assets. Different skin colors, right or left handed, different pens, nice. And the usability feature I truly deeply appreciate is the keyboard shortcut for previewing a video. Thank you Videoscribe. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows, of course I have a few things that I don't like too much. Their timeline. Yes, again with the timelines, it's not great. Points for the effort, but they haven't succeeded in building a functioning timeline. Worst thing about it is the lack of a scrubber that shows you where you are in the video. They used to only have the blocks view, and I think they should stick to that for now. If they could somehow work in what Synthesia does to time the animations to the voiceover using triggers in the text or voiceover, I think that would work really well in Videoscribe. I'm gonna give Videoscribe a usability score of six. The price of Videoscribe is shown in my local currency, but converted to US dollars, it's 59 bucks a month or $255 a year. This is good value for money, and I have to give Videoscribe a strong seven on price for the annual deal. In conclusion, Videoscribe is a focused whiteboard animation tool that has a nice primary style, a somewhat usable interface that you can learn in time, and a price point that makes it very accessible and useful for solo creators or freelancers. The average of my three scores is 6-6, six, six, and that makes Videoscribe a decent C-tier animation tool. Now we've been through a bunch of lukewarm animation tools, but this last one is definitely a recommend and a personal favorite. Full disclosure, I've used Beyond for more than 10 years, so I might be biased in my ability to see what's good and bad because I've invested so much time in the tool. With that said, the reason why I've spent so much time in Beyond is because I honestly think it's the most professional and versatile animation tool. Let's stick to the structure and start with styles. Beyond has three primary styles, and each one has large libraries with props, backgrounds, and characters in that style. The contemporary style is my favorite, it's the newest style in Beyond, and my guess is that it was created as a reaction to the increasing number of enterprise customers who demanded a more professional, grown-up, non-cartoonish style. It's a so-called flat style with few details, no shadows, little depth. It's 100% color customizable, so you can change the color of everything to match your brand colors. Next style is called business friendly, although it's probably not as business friendly as contemporary, but that's the name and the style is a bit more playful, bigger heads, more focus on facial expressions, emotions, and a great style for storytelling, scenario-based learning, conversations, stuff like that. This style has the largest library of template scenes, props, backgrounds, actions, and new content packs are released almost every month. I like that you can go industry specific and find asset categories that fit with what you work with. Last style is the whiteboard style, similar to Doodly and Videoscribe, but I like Beyond's whiteboard style a little bit better because of its simpler, thicker stroke and for the fact that it's 100% consistent across all assets so you can't mix up the whiteboard styles. Other tools try to add in the whiteboard style through the back door 
uh, and fail because it feels a little bit like a ha half-baked add-on. Uh, Vion's whiteboard style feels like uh, the third leg of a stool, like a sturdy and equal part of the product that could have made it as its own tool, really. For the aesthetics, the number of assets and the consistency within each style, I give Beyond a score of 9. The styles are great, but it's the usability of Beyond that sets it apart from other tools like Biteable that also got a very high style score of 9. A golden feature that makes Beyond stand out from the rest of the animation makers is the timeline. I'm trying not to be too much of a fanboy here, but I honestly think they've nailed it. The timeline is scene specific, so you only see what's relevant right now. It's stacked, like in any other standard video editor, no group views or alternative timeline views. And only animated assets are shown, not all assets in the scene. This simplifies things in a great way. The user interface is designed to cater for both the template people and the design from scratch users. No multiple views, just simple features that make both avenues easy to follow. Of all the tools I've tested, Beyond probably has the strongest build. Rarely do I experience glitches or bugs, and they also fixed a point of critique I had a couple of years ago where the whole tool slowed down when you worked with longer videos. Uh, it doesn't seem to be an issue anymore. Like Powtoon, Beyond uses a beginner-friendly logic for getting stuff to move from one place to another instead of the more advanced concept of keyframing. Powtoon called it A to B, Beyond calls it motion paths, and it's very intuitive to work with. The character creator is on par with some of the best, like Powtoons, but it's available on all plans, not just the $125 a month one. Different styles, body types, and decent libraries of assets for every body part. The text-to-speech feature in Beyond is rich in the sense that multiple qualities of voices are available, many voices support different voice styles, and the voice clip can easily be assigned to a character to make the mouth move to the words. Last positive on usability is the features around collaboration and sharing, where you can share projects and assets across multiple users who work within the same company. I did dig out some negative things about the usability of Beyond, but these are smaller things, like the need of having a pretty strong internet connection to make the whole tool run smoothly, uh, that promise of making videos in minutes which really isn't true, it takes time to make something good and beyond, and that many of the latest features feel more like gimmicks than anything useful. Just compare Beyond's background removal feature to what a dedicated tool can do. And the AI stuff like generating your own assets doesn't really work well enough to make it into a video. But these are new add-ons still in beta and they don't take away from the fundamental build of the platform. In that light, and compared to any other animation maker I've used, I have to give Beyond a usability score of 10. Beyond has gotten a lot of heat for their pricing. The internet thinks it's expensive. The plans are called Essential, Premium and Professional, and they'll cost you $49, $89 and $179 a month, or $299, $649 and $1099 a year. The Essential plan is close to useless because Beyond slaps a big watermark on all your exports, even though you pay $49 a month. That's harsh. So you have to get premium or professional, where the biggest difference I see between them is the ability to bulk edit and import your own fonts on the professional plan. If you want to sell videos made in Beyond, there's a fee of $99 every time you do that. Other tools have plans that give you commercial rights or reseller rights, but with Beyond, that's a fee for every video you sell. That puts a big break on agencies and freelancers who want to build a business using Beyond. So if you, for example, sell four videos a month, that adds about $5,000 a year to your Beyond payment. With a relatively high price point, a useless lowest plan, and the clumsy reseller ride setup, I give Beyond a price score of five. In conclusion, Beyond scores high overall because of their styles, an interface that's quick and pleasant to work with, a solid build that rarely breaks or annoys, and because it lets you animate both as a beginner and an experienced user within the same tool. The range of what you can create and how you create it is wide. The average of Beyond's three scores is eight, which makes Beyond an eight-tier animation maker alongside Biteable. Now you have an overview of what's out there, but the only way to find the one that's perfect for you is to try them out. 
Below this video, there's a link to a page I've made with trials and deals on all the animation makers I've reviewed. Let me know about your experiences in the comments and subscribe for more tool reviews in the future. Thanks for watching.